Welcome back to the lab. As you can see, the snow has fallen and it's getting colder every single day. And that allows us to do some interesting chemistry. I have a project in the works making cyclobutane. And that boils around 10 degrees Celsius. So if we want to have some efficient condensing, we have to have very cold temperatures. And that's exactly what we're getting. So, if we want to make cyclobutane, we first have to make the chemicals to make the cyclobutane. And that's what we're going to be getting to today in the lab. Now before we get to work, I first have to show you these two new heating mantles I got. We're upgrading from that small, dinky little hot plate. And now we have some real power, some real heating efficiency. So that's going to help us a lot during synthesis in the future. I've already used it tons of times to fractionate toluene, HBr. It's a big help speeds things along wonderfully. So the precursor to cyclobutane that I'm talking about is 1,4-dibromobutane. And we're going to be making that by doing a ring opening on THF with hydrobromic acid and sulfuric acid as our catalyst. So here's our mechanism for opening the THF ring. And then we are doing a second bromination on this OH group and turning it into bromo group. So, not going to go too in-depth on that, but that's the mechanism that we're going to be using. And this procedure is based off of the one found in Vogel's textbook of Practical Organic Chemistry. Real gem. Recommend you pick it up. Full of probably thousands of different procedures on preparing tons of organic compounds. It's great. So let's get to it. Now I'm going to be following the procedure listed in the textbook quite closely. In fact, very closely. I'm only changing the amount of sulfuric acid I'm using because they use concentrated sulfuric while well, I only have drain opener. So for that, I'm adjusting this to 80 grams of sulfuric acid from 75 and keeping this at 250 grams of azeotropic hydrobromic acid and 18.1 grams of THF. Now I prepared this hydrobromic acid just quickly from some sodium bromide and sulfuric acid. So that's all you need these four chemicals, bromide source, sulfuric, and THF. And honestly, you probably wouldn't even need to make the hydrobromic acid. You could just use directly the sodium bromide and the sulfuric acid with the THF, but of course you're going to get lower yields and you'll have to deal with the sodium salts, which might be an issue, although the layers should separate, but still. You'll get better yields by using hydrobromic acid, so I recommend that. Okay, so now I'm going to charge the reagents into a 500 milliliter round bottom flask with a stir bar in the 500 milliliter mantle. So that was 250 grams of hydrobromic acid or about 170 milliliters worth. Now I'm turning on stirring and I'm going to slowly charge in the sulfuric acid over a few additions just to reduce the heating. This stuff's already pretty cold, it's around 7 degrees Celsius. But I will still add it slowly to reduce any chance of bromine forming. But you can see that there is already some yellow coloration. I'm kind of stirring a little bit higher then. Try to drop directly down into the hydrobromic acid. That works much better. Reduces localized heating on the sides. Now I'm going to add the THF. I'm now going to attach a condenser for refluxing the mixture. We're going to bring it up to a gentle reflux for about, I'd say, four hours. The procedure calls for three, but 
We'll likely get a slightly higher yield if we let it reflux for longer. So I'm going to plug in the recirculating pump and put cold water through the column. And I'll turn on heating. We want to bring it up to a gentle reflux, so not any vigorous boiling, just a slow simmer. So you can see that there's droplets forming on the flask, however when I touch it, it's like just barely warm to the touch and that's because it's the THF that's currently boiling off at 66 degrees Celsius. So this is kind of where we want to keep it because if we bring it up too hot then the THF might be able to be pushed out of the condenser. On another note, this uses a lot of hydrobromic acid and it's a huge excess because you want to push the yield further. Higher hydrobromic acid means that well, the reaction will go live faster as well, so it's probably another reason. Uh, you probably will be able to recover most of the hydrobromic acid at the end of the reaction just with a distillation. And I think it's worth it. It's quite a bit of hydrobromic acid. So I've just stopped the reflux after just over four hours and you can see the layers have already separated out. At the bottom we have our dense 1,4 dibromobutane and we have the aqueous layer up here. So once this all cools down I'll transfer it to a separatory funnel. Okay so now I'm going to transfer the aqueous layer and the 1,4 dibromobutane layer into a separatory funnel. Careful to make sure the stir bar doesn't fall in. And we'll let those layers separate and drain off the lower one for dibromobutane layer. I'm now going to wash the one for dibromobutane, the crude product, with an equal volume of concentrated hydrochloric acid. And then I will wash the product with uh, 30 mils of water, then 30 mils of 5% sodium bicarbonate solution, and then finally another 30 mils of water. And here is the wash product before distillation. Currently I have it sitting over magnesium sulfate to dry it. Alright, the 1,4 dibromobutane has been sitting over anhydrous magnesium sulfate for just about two hours now. So now I'm going to do a vacuum filtration on it to separate it from all the magnesium sulfate. So I put the 1,4 dibromobutane on the hot plate and I've set up for a short path distillation and we're going to be distilling off the product to purify it further. Definitely want to have a short path with this because the boiling point is very high, 200 degrees Celsius in fact, around that, but we're going to be collecting some 4 run likely before so I set up with a smaller receiving flask and then I'll switch out for a 50 ml Erlenmeyer or 50 ml ground bottom after that. The distillation is finished. I've collected I've, most of the 1,4 dibromobutane. There is a tiny amount of forerun, really not much to be mentioned, maybe half a mil. And there's probably about, I'd say, half a mil left in the distillation flask as well. Really, it was all 1,4 dibromobutane, it seems, which is great. So now I'll weigh it out, put it in a bottle, and we'll calculate the yield. The distillation has been completed, and the final yield 
is 41.2 grams of the 1,4 dibromobutane. And that correlates to a 76% yield, which is actually 2% better than the yield in Vogel. And the theory behind why I got a better yield is because I reflux for an hour longer for 2%. So, pretty good. All around, happy with the synthesis. So now we can move on in the future to making some cyclobutane. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next one.